Oh, hey, there you are. Sorry, I was busy staring at Lent. Take a look at me now. All right, musical guest, restaurant, song, shorts. You're gonna love it. I'll give you a link to it right about here, right about now. Do I seem really stressed out to you even more than normal? Well, guess what? I am. I have got home just in time. Still got the work clothes on. I'm pretty spiffy, right? But now I have to get in the car and go to the Antelope Valley Fairgrounds because that's right, it's time to turn in the county fair guitar. County fair guitar. Okay, you've been seeing this built out. Let's do the, don't you hate this, flyby. I'll give you a close up of it again, but I just got this done and now I have to take it to the fairgrounds. It's going to be there for like two weeks. I'm not going to be able to get to it. I'm going to need rehab. Um, this is like separation anxiety. I'm going to be ADD or, or whatever you call all that. This is like really important to me. I'm going to miss it so much. Anyway, I'm going to have to find something else to eat up my time. We're going to talk about that a little bit later in the episode. I got something really exciting this week in the mail. Oh, almost forgot before I give you a flyby uh, and show you the details of the guitar. Um, let's not forget, give me a like. Give me a subscribe. Um, here, what am I looking for? Oh, forgot to tell you. Earl Lube Paste, Minty Fresh, now available in metric. Okay, we've got the cobalt blue bottleneck that I cut. Hey, ain't that great? Map of California, including our favorite Ridgecrest, home of earthquakes and Rube Lacey. Hey, there's the grease cert. There's the 1937 Buffalo Nickel Tammy signature. This is like, this reminds me of Bob Logg's school bus. Like these colors. Let's flip this around. Look at that shot up license plate. Got the yellow uh, knob on the potentiometer. Bullet holes makes it really acoustic, flat. Um, coil pop love these matchbooks act and rental red rover mine road cool 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 I really like the way this turned out uh, this might be a slam dunk ribbon except for one slight problem Kendra's purse look at this it is a Camacho box it's got a latch you can put all your Percy purse things in it I think she's trying to get people to automatically award her ribbons with this little setup here. I'm really concerned about this. If she wasn't standing right behind me, I would just smash this, I think, so I could be the sure winner, but I'm not gonna be able to get away with that. So I gotta get to the fair. Uh, I'll get this clown suit off and talk to you in a little bit about the rest of the episode. All right, we're here. So, it's nine nine little nine nine for two weeks. I guess I'm gonna be all right. All right, guys, I'm back from the fairground wardrobe change. Hey, check this out. You like this? Guess what? I got a package from Fat Possum Records. Got the shirt and Burnside style Fat Possum Records. You know what this is, right? You want this, right? Don't covet me. Just get a hold of Fat Possum Records and you can get this stuff too. Now, the mail has also been good to me in other ways. And I want to talk to you a little bit. How many videos do I have out? Probably 80 about cigar box guitars, coffee can guitars, license plate guitars. I mean, 80 videos about that. I'm kind of pushing the limit. I checked the other day and the videos about open heart surgery are even less than the number I've got out about cigar box guitars. So I'm finally going to take my channel where I've always wanted to go in the first place. And that is, I'm going to give you little tech tips. Um, somebody will send me emails. I really like your email. Somebody asked me the other day, Hey, how do you 
uh, what's going on inside those floating bridges so I can take that get a short little clip show you the very basics and then refer when I go like this and there's an eye up there when you hover your mouse up there you see an eye pop up and you'll see some suggested videos so if I show you a little clip about how to do real quick a floating bridge and then point up there, you're going to be able to see the full blown episode about floating bridges until, I mean, it says everything. You'll be hypnotized. You'll quit smoking and everything. But where I really want to take my channel is down into the roots of where our music comes from. And so my favorite thing to do is build a theme guitar that's built around an artist and has artifacts or relics that are pertinent to that artist and I think we're going to go down there with a few guitars I'm going to build. Um, so to get there I'm going to start telling you a little bit uh, about some of the people who are responsible for making sure that the blues we listen to today actually made it to today and we're going to start off by talking about George Mitchell. Now we can't talk about George Mitchell, uh, people like George Mitchell and people like David Evans, who we're going to cover in a future episode. I'm really excited about that one. I've been in contact with these individuals, and uh, they're a plethora of information. Yeah, I use that word plethora, oil field friends. Yeah, I bought a vocabulary since I got out of Oklahoma, Texas, son. Now, no discussion of blues music or um, cultural anthropology or cultural musicology or whatever other term I can make up today can start without discussing Alan Lomax and his father John. John went out on behalf of the Library of Congress and started collecting recordings of people talking music and things that were thought might disappear as um, uh, places where farming and plantation work kind of dissipated and our, our country became more uh, mechanized is the best way to put that. Alan Lomax was recording people like Sun House in 1941 and 1942 and all kinds of different people. Came back into North Mississippi about 1959, did some additional recording. But um, remember, his motive, Alan Lomax's motive, was he was working for the Library of Congress. The Library of Congress does not hand out gig money for you to pay people. There's been talk that he would pay people in Coca-Cola uh, and stuff like that. So he had to get creative to get people together. But when he would come to your town, it was more like, oh, this guy's in town, he's recording. I don't want to even get into all the, the politics and mess that was going on back then. But when he came to town, um, people would try to get recorded and he would have to sort this out. And you want to remember the the places they were recording in might be juke joint somebody's house or whatever, crowd lit up and stuff. So if you're looking at it from a strictly capturing the content and context of the music, that was that was a challenge, especially with the recording uh, equipment they had back then. But everything goes back to Alan Lomax and then we got another group of people that came in in the 1960s and one of them was George Mitchell. George Mitchell was a college student about 1967. He's up in Minnesota. You notice it's so far north that I'm going like this. It's cold there. I can feel it. I wish I was there now instead of this hot summer in my guitar shed. But anyway, George Mitchell and his wife Kathy left Minnesota to go down into Mississippi and down into that area and actually record some people that Alan Lomax had recorded and possibly some new people. So they took a camera that I think was not probably the best camera and some recording equipment that was probably not the best recording um, equipment and threw it into a Volkswagen. Yeah, that would be my choice of cars for a long trip into places and roads I don't know where I'm going. Anyway, they had enough wherewithal to jump in the car as young people and make that trip the summer of 1967. Okay, I want to put a couple of these books away, the Alan Lomax book, The Land Where Blues Began. This is uh, largely a collection of memories that Alan Lomax had to put in a book to get it published about uh, especially North Mississippi Hill Country Music. You're going to love this one. You might as well get a copy of this, David Evans' Big Road Blues. I got mine, so I don't know what you're going to pay for yours, but we're going to be talking about this one and this guy, David Evans, heavily in a future video. But here's what we're talking about today, and I want to bring this into modern stuff for you. Again, the Lomaxes were about capturing things that they thought might be lost. In the 1960s, you had people like David Evans, George Mitchell, 
um, Fahey, I can go on and on, Alan Wilson, um, we talked about him out of Canteed and his ability and his connections. Anyway, um, I'll probably do a whole video about this, but I'm just trying to show you this book today. Um, when we open it up, the photography is awesome. There's Mississippi Fred McDowell, uh, pictures taken where he was. Remember, this was just a road trip that somebody planned out. Um, but you got the who's who of everything. There's Oath or Turner right there. Um, if you know about Oath or Turner, you should. If you don't, this book will teach you. Look at R.L. Burnside in 1967. Um, young man, um, we all know him. I'm gonna get to a couple examples here. And let me get to my next bookmark. These are awesome bookmarks, huh? Free. Uh, Jessie May Hampill, you know her. So how do these people affect us? Well, first off, when it comes to Oath or Turner, um, you would not have Sade Thomas and the Rising Star um, Fife and Drum Band. Um, look at this. I got this. Uh, remember the episode, How to Make a Cane Fife? Yeah, this is it. You've seen this before. I card up there right about now. Can I play it? No. <laughs> Isn't that terrible? Anyway, if it wasn't for Oath or Turner, you wouldn't have the North Mississippi All-Stars. Uh, you wouldn't have R.L. Boyce. R.L. Boyce is still going strong in North Mississippi. Um, in fact, there's a festival coming up September uh, 1st. I think it's the late part of August, September 1st, I know, for his birthday. R.L. Boyce, in addition to being both the Turner's uh, nephew, which makes him Charday Thomas's cousin, he um, played drums on Jesse May Hemphill's album, Feeling Good. But when you get to Mississippi, Fred McDowell, uh, guess what? R.L. Burnside credits uh, Mississippi Fred McDowell with some of uh, his uh, influence. So. There's R.L. Burnside. Without R.L. Burnside, you don't have the Miss North Mississippi All-Stars. Without Mississippi Fred McDowell, you don't have Do-Rag. You don't have Bob Log III. And the sleeper of the bunch that I keep telling you about over and over is Restaurant, R-E-S-T-A-V-R-A-N-T. Troy Murrah, awesome guitarist. Here's one of their CDs. And yeah, that's R.L. Burnside. Back to Mississippi Fred McDowell. Without him, you don't have Margaret Garrett. Um, she plays some of his songs. She actually, when she's on, you can tell because she's got like a little shrine set up to Jesse May Hemphill with a candle and she's got some pictures of Jesse May. She actually visited Jesse May when she was still alive. But um, yeah, Margaret Garrett, love you. Um, yeah, look at that. There's my Sky Zephyr guitar. At, uh, there's Margaret and she recorded this whole CD on that guitar right there. There'll be an episode right up there right about now. But the whole point of this is the set is awesome. It's going to take up my time wondering whether I got a ribbon or not with that guitar that I'm going to end up sending off to Europe. But you get all this. You get 47 artists, 174 different songs. And it kind of gives you a capture of a moment between Alan Lomax and these people here now. Okay, guys, I would be remiss if I didn't do this. Uh, this guitar's got a lot of signatures on it. I want to thank you guys for spending time with me. Cedric Burnside, R.T. Valine, Smoke Ta Stack Relics, Luther Dickinson, Reverend Payton. Let me get where I can get the rest of them. Tim Lohman, Low Volts, Troy Murrah, Catfish Keith, and of course where it all began, Tammy, thank you all very much. This is a family heirloom. Okay, so that's it. You can do a couple of things for me. First off, if you can find uh, George Mitchell on the internet, do that. Send him a thank you because if it wasn't for his foresight of taking that trip uh, and being a dreamer and whatever he was to get this music, we would not have it today. And some of the people that I've mentioned along the way, we wouldn't have... Uh, the influence of the people he recorded in 1967 and his subsequent work. We wouldn't have that today in our life. It would be pretty boring. Next thing what I need you to do is understand that if you buy this box set, you're going to get 
47 different artists singing 174 different songs. Um, you got Mississippi Fred McDowell, you got uh, Jesse May Hampill, you got um, Arthur Turner, um, you got a ton of people and they're all right here. There is, I'm trying to fish this out of here. The liner notes booklet is really worth the box because it goes through all of this. But when you're listening to the music, if you have this book, so you've got the sound and you have the picture book that went with it. And this is an exquisite book. The photography is great, all kinds of stories. Um, and um, it's really going to teach you um, where some of our music came from today. So uh, the box set is available. I'm trying to get everything together here is available on seven inch vinyl. Um, it's more expensive than this. Uh, this book and this, if you get to see these, you're talking less than 150 bucks. It'll be a good investment. Now, I'm going to give you a link below. Support a George or the kind word and then buy this product. I'm going to give you a link below. I'm not here. I don't have no link to make money off this. I got no reason to push this other than for you to understand where my instruments are coming from and especially the builds I'm going to do in the future. We get down into the history and you see it coming together in a guitar. So thanks for watching. Don't forget, give me a like, subscribe, and metricators, 